There's a movie in Korea causing couples to break up, spitting out dangerous feminist philosophies like equal rights or something. Is this movie as crazy super feminist as people say? And are couples really breaking up at such alarming rates? It's time for a reality check. You may have seen this news article pop up on your social media feeds recently. South Korean couples are breaking up over feminist film Kim Ji Young born 1982. Why? Why Korean men are ending their romantic relationships over Gong Yoo and Jung Yoo Mi's movie. Oh my god, so much to talk about here. Can't wait to break it down after a little bit of background. So this is gonna be the condensed version of what's happening with feminism and anti-feminism in Korea. Clearly I don't have all the information, but we're gonna go into it. And what other perfect person to deal with this than a white man explaining things? But I'll give it my best shot. Feminism has been around for a long time, ever since women wanted rights, but it really started picking up steam after the 2016 Gangnam murder. Out one night, a young woman was murdered by a 34-year-old man who just had it out against women because he had been overlooked and humiliated his entire life by women. So he killed someone. Great, we've got incels lurking in Korea as well. So probably a murder of an incel, someone who didn't feel respected by women because he is entitled to it because something. Of course, many issues had been brought up by feminists before, but this is about the time that it really took the main stage. And every time feminism rises up, anti-feminism also comes up because men need equal rights too. It's just so unfair that women get as much as 63% of what a man works for the same job? Unfair. Granted, it's way more complicated than that because men lose two years of their lives by going into the military to serve and get nothing out of it. This explains where a lot of the anger is coming from, but it doesn't really justify where the anger is directed at. The problem is systematic. It's not a woman's fault that you have to go to the military. If anything, it's the US and Soviet Union's fault from before the Korean War. But that's another story. All right, back to the movie. What makes this movie so controversial? This movie is based on the book by author Jo Nam Joo. It follows the life of Kim Ji Young, who is the average Korean woman who has an average life. In fact, Kim is one of the most common surnames in Korea and Ji Young was a very common name for women born in the 80s. It shows how everyday discrimination has slowly taken its toll on Kim Ji Young as she grew up in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. Some examples include men using the word mom chung, which is a combination of the word mom and the Korean word for a bug, which is a derogatory term used for moms who bring their children here to wherever, the cafe, and disrupt people's lives, but it's the children's fault, so the mom should have left the child at home. Difficulties for women in getting promoted in the workplace and hidden cameras in the bathrooms, which is still something that happens today. You know, talking points of those feminists who just don't want to be spied on while using the bathroom. So now back to the movie. Why is this movie so controversial? Because it denigrates men and makes them look terrible? Well, that's how the argument goes. I mean, how can anyone support feminism? They don't want equality. They want to be higher than men. I mean, they won't even join the military. They just want men to do everything for them, like open doors and stuff. It's so tough to be a man. All right, let's ignore the lack of thought put into that argument and just move on. Why are people breaking up over this movie? It turns out even the idea of seeing the movie is what's controversial. I got some fun numbers to look at. When we looked at the movie critics' ratings, we noticed that they were all around the average of 6.79, give or take a few points and there were a few outliers. However, when you look at the netizens ratings, that's where it gets really interesting, especially when you break it up between men and women. Women gave the movie an average rating of 9.52 while men gave the rating close uh, 2.78. That's close, right? That's like some serious polarization. Holy sh**. The problem with that rating is it includes people who never even watched the movie, obviously, because when we look at those numbers of who watched the movie, the rating changes to this. The average rating was 9.32, with women giving an average rating of 9.47, and men giving an average rating of 8.94. It's a big difference here, right? And they saw the movie, they can give it a rating. And then that's where I saw the reviews. Which from the men's side made a lot of sense, because I saw lots of reviews from before the movie even came out about how hard men's lives are in Korea, and the movie didn't even mention those things. 
Did they watch the movie? No, of course not. Women, of course, spoke more positively about it, saying they related to those situations and could really understand the character. The key here is the polarization based on mostly men who haven't seen the movies and women who want to watch it or already have. And this might be the reason that couples in Korea are breaking up. Now, to be fair, most of what's being reported on by news outlets in Korea are basically what netizens wrote online. So it's not the most accurate source of information, but you can see general trends. One woman posted that she had to choose between watching the movie and having a boyfriend. Ooh, it's pretty harsh lines from the guy who is open-minded about this thing. Because only the cool people in history tried to control someone's viewpoints by controlling the media that they're allowed to consume. For her sake, I hope she chose the movie. And there are plenty of others who are reporting that they're getting into argument with their boyfriends or girlfriends based on the mere mention of the idea of thinking about seeing the movie. But one of the more serious problems that's arising from this situation isn't what's in the netizens world, it's what's happening on the ground. From what I've gathered here amongst my friend circles in South Korea, many women are afraid to even bring up the subject of the movie or feminism with their male friends, thinking that they may either A, lose the friendship, or B, cause a rift in the friend circle that they are a part of. It's not just breaking up boyfriends and girlfriends, it's breaking up friends, families, drunk uncles and their kids. Well, that's probably a good thing. So what is the solution here? Well, it depends on whose side you're on. If you believe that feminism is dangerous to society, it is your duty to complain about the movie without ever seeing it because that proves that you're educated on the issue. The other option is to watch the movie and try to get an informed opinion on it. The final thing I wanna bring up really is a message for other men. Feminism in Korea is really not popular. There was a poll last year done by Real Meter that found that 76% of men opposed feminism in their 20s. That number dropped to 66% of men in their 30s, which makes sense since people in their 20s are the ones that are about to go into military service and feel like that part of society is unfair to men. But still, that number seems really high. 2018 research by the Korean Women's Development Institute by Ma Young hee showed that 55% of men opposed the Me Too movement, and only 18% of men wanted to learn more about feminism. So what are some simple steps that men can do in this society? The first step is just to say, hey, I'm a feminist. You don't have to get a t-shirt that says feminist and brag about it all over the place and overstep your role. Remember, we're allies, not team leaders. But it's important just to say, I support these causes. I myself am not a perfect feminist by any means. Just look at the way I fight with my girlfriend. I'm kind of a jerk, but I'm trying my best to learn. The other thing you can do is create a safe environment for women to talk about that movie or other issues that are bothering them. That's sometimes all that's needed to start a conversation between the two genders. If you're at a group dinner and somebody starts complaining about that movie or feminism in general, challenge him. It'll show the other people around you that you might support what they believe, but they were too afraid to speak out against it because in this society still, men have way more power than women, contrary to what to anti-feminists might tell you. As an ally, it's important to listen and let the people who are affected by it speak on their own behalf. But at the same time, when you have a position of privilege, you need to speak up for people who don't have a voice. And as for my review on the movie, it's a good watch for men who can learn about how subtle sexism in society affects women on a daily basis, but also for women who can probably relate to the main character, Kim Ji Young. That's all I have to say about this today. Hopefully you get a little bit more context about how couples are breaking up over this movie. But I do wanna say one thing. Don't think that Korean men are not supportive of feminism just because of what I said earlier. There were lots of couples in that movie theater and the men were not trying to mansplain the movie at all. There are a lot of open-minded people here in Korea, both men and women, and you'll probably find some if you just speak out a little bit about your opinions on these issues. And it's good to have allies of allies, if that makes sense. So don't stereotype an entire nation because of what you saw on a headline of a news title. That's sensationalism. Not all Korean men are sexist and many are better allies than I'll ever be to the cause. That being said, I hope you do go out and watch the movie. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it myself. It's not an action movie. It's slow, but it is a tearjerker if you like those kind of movies. And you might learn something. And that's cool too. This was Reality Check as real as it gets. Don't forget to always be good, do good, and feel good. And of course, repeat. See you next week. Goodbye. Hase, yo.